Bonjour à toutes et à tous. Merci pour votre patience. Et bienvenue à la table ronde photographie et musique fusion des territoires. I'll just say a quick word in English. We are going to mainly speak in French, but if you need translation, you can have the headphones back there, and the other way around works also. If you need, in any kind of languages, if you need translation from French to English or English from to French, you will speak the English français ou le français anglais. Mettez des écouteurs. So I want to start this round table in French. And uh, it's about photography and music fusion of territories. Sometimes uh, uh, this discussion is bound to be a laboratory and maybe even a forum. And uh, thus we can experiment and question. And this I. Participer à la fin de la table ronde et à partager avec euh, nous vos questions. Je disais donc un, un laboratoire. We're going to discuss here um, in a forum, in a laboratory, and um, as I said, this is a sort of open air laboratory. How does this work? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm trying to find out how this works. Could somebody come and help me, please? SOS technical assistance. SOS technical assistance. Merci. La technique n'est pas avec nous aujourd'hui. Super. Technique does not seem to be on our side, but we're going to get there. It's not a question of uh, where I'm sitting. Okay, so I start again. <laughs> In a book which was published in 2000, Edward Said writes about the counterpoint. Uh, classical music is, um, as a matter of fact, based on those different musical lines. And if you want polyphony in the music, um, you can read also. When I read this Palestinian-American scholar, literary theorist and critic, I first wondered if writing counterpoint could be considered when writing about visual matters. And then I wondered if writing with light, is, that is photography, could also be writing in counterpoint. Not with the idea of complicating our conceptions of the medium, but with the idea of conceiving a photographic practice that highlights the diversity of voices, the multiplicity of experiences, and a variety of testimonies. All of this to emphasize the heterogeneity of photographic practices, the possibility of a visual symphony. Following this initial reflection, I wondered what musicology, more broadly, could offer us to think about images and photographic practices. I therefore set out to find links, relationships, similarities, correlations or affinities between music and photography. The idea is to think about photography with and through music. To bring together eye and ear, to make our senses dialogue when it comes to producing, but also looking at photographic creation. A funny realization arised when I realized that we were talking about the cadence, rhythm, or tempo of an editing, or that we were analyzing the composition of a photograph, but that the subject or counter subject of a photographed scene was called the punctum or studium by Bart that they speak of instrumentation when we speak of device, that the decisive moment is the authentic expression of a musician with his instrument, that we notice the harmony and form of a photograph, but also that we observe a movement or a motive in the work of the photographer, that improvisation or jamming is essential for photographers, work, photographers who work with reality, that the appropriated image of a collage is a sample, that a riff or repetition gives a photographic series, that there are 
composed, artificially created sounds and staged photographs, but also environmental sounds or noises and snapshots. The first conclusion is that there is a lot of traffic between photography and music. But let us return for a moment to Said's counterpoint and the poly polyphony it allows. I hate this thing. <laughs> this, okay. It seems that music has always taken the liberty of a right to narrate the hybridity of sounds as the result of the hybridity of cultures. Um, the right to narrate uh, image making, what can it do in the light of the multiplicity of cultures? Sorry, we're not on good terms, this thing and I. Uh, uh, let me mention Afro beat, Afro house, Afro trap and bongo flava, bossa nova, dub, ethio, jazz, jungle, Ryan B. Just to name a few, this is a mixture of here and, and elsewhere to create a musical third space. So why not imagine the fusion of a here and an elsewhere to create a photographic third space? Or to produce a vernacular cosmopolitanism. <laughs> or to produce a vernacular cosmopolitanism, as Homi Plava would write. New questions, can we expand the sensory register of the image to perceive images produced in a diasporic context? Can we see the contradictions of lived and learned cultures as an asset to the creative impulse? Thus, music and photography can be seen as a medium, also in the sense of intermediaries that move from the centrality of one country to the margins of another and carry within them the possibility of a narrative of an encounter of culture. This fusion of cultures is what the 12th issue of the Eyes magazine is all about. Entitled B-Side, Photography, Afro, Peer, Fusion, the issue was developed in collaboration with writer and photography, Johnny Pitts, who is sitting here at my left side. Originally from the north of England, born into two cultures, African, American, and British, his work examines the interaction of black and European cultures as revealed in his photo literary work, afro -Pian. Notes from Black Europe, 2019. The working sessions for the magazine revealed that revealed that for Johnny, music is a central element of inspiration, but also a way of thinking about his photographic practice, as you can read in his essay entitled Spectres and Textures, published in this issue. Naturally, echoes were numerous. At the same time, the publication of Périphérique as a book by the franco algerian artist Mohamed Bourouissa, who is sitting here on the right-hand side, on the right side of the podium, by Loose Joints, plunged me back into the artist's musical references, ranging from Bouba to Arsenic, from Expression Direct to IAM. They all take the liberty of recounting the interstitial space of the experience of the displaced and the wretched. Finally, a confirmed intuition led me to see musically in Franco-Caribbean photography Sidrine Shadig's series Insula, made in Malta in collaboration with the new African diaspora. For Sidrine, music plays a key role in the process of meeting the community and holds an important place in the recreation of a new home on the island for the newly exiled. Thus, to deepen these subjects, I propose to turn to them and talk about music and photography, following three steps. One, music as an influence, inspiration, and kickstarter. Two, musicality as a place for visual creation and photographic practice. Three, music as a vector for reading an image. So maybe we can start with a quotation which I like a lot from an author I like, Fred Moulton who writes in one of his books, 2003, which is called In the Break. He says, what is the sound that precedes the image? And I should like to ask this question to the three of you. Which are the sounds preceding an image? Which are the musical references, which at one time or another uh, give a stimulation to your thinking and your creation? Johnny, would you like to start? <laughs> Um, what is the sound that precedes the image? Um,
je suppose que la chose évidente de dire, c'est hip-hop. Pour moi, c'est le son de l'imagination. Radha Karava, sa coopération avec l'Action Fuse, Sweet Fly Paper of Life, un livre, livre absolument fabuleux. Le jazz est inscrit d'une certaine manière dans la manière dont ce livre a été euh, préparé, ce Jake Ravis book, le livre The Sound I Saw, le son que j'ai vu, et l'Axinius et les poèmes, dans ses poèmes. Donc ça, c'est une, une clé. Et ensuite, le son de ma génération, ce n'est pas le jazz. Je ne sais, pour, je ne sais pas comment c'est en France, mais en France, en Grande-Bretagne, il y a ra rarement des gens de couleur dans un concert de jazz. Pour notre génération, c'est plutôt le hip-hop. Donc, les, les artistes Soquarians, au début du siècle, euh, ils ont fait des choses tout à fait et en James Boyza, par exemple, et Jay Dillon. Et ce qui est vraiment étonnant, c'est la conversation entre Jay Dillon et ses musiciens fabuleux. Vian Delow, un excellent pianiste et chanteur, et Soquasians, et il a... Il s'adressait, il travaillait avec une machine, donc euh, le, le rythme était un peu de côté. Et D'Angelo et d'autres musiciens ont utilisé cette, euh, cette, cette faute, cette, cette erreur d'être légèrement décalé dans le rythme. Ils s'en ils ils sont servis et c'est ce qui correspond à ma pratique. Je pense que je pourrais citer tout un tas d'artistes. It was a music uh, that basically made it possible to recreate your home, but elsewhere. Since I'm from the second generation, I was uh, born in the suburbs of Paris, so this music uh, basically referred uh, for everything that we were missing, missing what was far off, uh, what we were lacking and what we were missing to define ourselves as my parents were defined. So what I think that really precedes my images It's the absence or the, the missing of music, and photography is somehow making up for that. Mohammed? Can you repeat the question? What are the sounds that precede your images? What are the sounds that you listened to when you were doing Périphérique, uh, making Périphérique? What was the original soundtrack of your thought, of your process, when you were working on Périphérique? It's simple. I was listening to rap when I was working on Périphérique groups. I grew up with American rap and also French rap. Well-known groups, MOP, EPMD, and others, and on the French side, There were rappers like Arsenic Abouba uh, and uh, Sectora. That was a collective from Sarcelles, which is a suburb of Paris, and they were really important. So they're all linked to images, and it's pretty funny. But I started with a group that's hardly known at all here, Ghetto Fab Plus Gang. It's from Clignancourt, a neighborhood in Paris. It's a mythical group. They started to do independent rap. So it was really the time of independent rap. 
and I also uh, drew uh, album covers, and my relationship to the image has to do with my coming up with the covers of albums. So uh, it was a whole universe there, and the way related to images is is directly related to album covers. Johnny, uh, the term Afropean comes from music, and uh, from Zap Mama. Can you tell us a little bit about how you discovered the term and the connection with music? Yeah, I mean, I grew up. Oui, je ne sais pas si vous avez vu le film The Full Monty, et j'ai grandi dans cette partie de Sheffield. Si vous ne l'avez pas vu, eh bien, c'est une ville industrielle. Après l'économie du marché libre, Margaret Thatcher, dans les années 80, la ville a été littéralement détruite. Ce n'était plus qu'une carcasse de, de l'industrie. La ville a dû retrouver euh, un, une nouvelle forme. Mon père est afro-américain. Moi, je suis un bébé du Nord. Un, not a soul baby, c'est le, le soul du Nord qui m'a influencé. Euh, les Anglais blancs euh, du Nord qui travaillent dans les mines ou euh, dans, les dans les usines. Et puis le week-end, ils dansent sur cette musique afro-américaine, soul et funk. Et donc c'est ça qui m'a bercé quand j'étais petit. Et je savais que je n'étais pas américain. Et pourtant... Je ne me sentais pas complètement connectée avec cet environnement où j'ai grandi. Et puis le terme afro-européen euh, émerge. Et c'est un continent plus large qui s'est ouvert à moi. Et c'était une sorte de, de chez moi, si vous voulez. J'ai vu qu'il y avait beaucoup d'autres personnes qui jouaient dans, euh, ce, dans ces terrains vagues. Euh, postcolonial et afropéen, c'est quelque chose qui relie ces deux traditions auxquelles j'appartiens et n'appartient pas. Donc, si j'étais suffisamment bon musicien, j'aurais probablement pas écrit un livre sur les images, parce que la musique, on, on entend la fusion euh, avec euh, Mama's Music et l'afro-européen. L'afropéen, pardon, euh, c'est l'image de ça. Tu as mentionné euh, pour nous le, le rap. You talked about rap, but I'm also thinking about hip hop uh, culture that you share with Johnny, in particular uh, your discovery of Jamel Shabazz's uh, book Packing the Days. Can you say something about this? How did you come across the book and? What did it inspire in you and the link uh, with hip hop and the whole representation that you had of hip hop at the time? Maybe we can show some pictures of the book. It's a very well known book back in the day. Back then, I didn't uh, do photography. It was back in 2003 when, when my friend Anna Shoot, we discovered this book. And it was a shock, it was a visual shock. to be represented for once. There was a whole culture, both uh, in hip hop, but in the uh, uh, suburbs of Paris in Châtelet, which is in the center of Paris, but where everybody met and people came in to hang. And we realized that there was no image that would leave a trace of that generation and of those times. So back then, and I'm giving you the simple story, There was a whole culture around La Côte, and that's uh, another interesting story. So there's a whole way of dressing, there's a whole code, and photography was very social, uh, looking at uh, uh, poverty, and it was very uh, paternalistic, uh, patronizing. And it was me, for me a shock, because here he was representing them with their code, their style, and pride, in the images and I found they were really beautiful and I said, we need to do this. We need to do the same thing in Paris. And so we started to work and we worked for two years on this series in Châtelet and I call it Nous Sommes Al because the other name of Châtelet is Les Al. Thank you, Mohamed. Cédrine, and will you talk about uh, Italian reggaeton and the Jamaican 
music of this in the musical landscape of uh, your series Insulaire, Insular. Tell us how these musics basically guided you uh, to your subject, brought you to your subject. Insulaire is a photographic work where I looked at an African community that is actually being created on Malta because of recent immigration uh, through the central of the Med. And there's this diaspora that's literally being formed. So in a way, it was the experience of our parents uh, back then, but now in a new way and with new issues. And what I saw by tracing their steps, and it's what I'd seen by tracing the steps of my father, there's a music that only becomes your home and looking for a place where you can be yourself and the way the music is actually connected to that place. So the music for these young people that I'm uh, photographing is something that talks or speaks about the diversity of the paths they've taken, literally the the pathways they've taken and all the exchanges and the exchanges between the African continent and the diasporas in Europe or in America. So if you like, there's a collision of the Jamaican music, of the Gambian reggae, of the Italian pop reggae uh, that they encountered in the places where they first landed in Italy and they had to learn the language, and music was the way in which uh, you st they started to learn the language. For instance, the Gambian uh, community with the Jamaican music, it, and, and there's a musical industry exchange between these two countries. There are a lot of Jamaican music producers who go to produce music in the Gambi, Gambia, and, uh, and a lot of Gambian artists produce Jamaican, and they, they sing a kind of Jamaican Creole so you have a, a link between these three spots, so Malta, Europe, Africa, and the Caribbean. And so for me, it was a way to uh, sort of get into, step into their daily life and to be connected. It's, it was a connection. I wanted to look at this uh, quote together. It's a recent publication in the Exhibit by Sweet Returns. Uh, so uh, Ramel Ross wrote, uh, and I'll translate what he says. He says, use music as a mentor. Uh, what music does in the universe is embody its musicality, its being, its form, the liquid organization, its escape from reason, and the need to justify itself, or be dance. I wanted to ask you for your reaction. Can, can you just react to this uh, quote? Uh, I found it very moving. And I think it really uh, symbolized what we're saying today. Cédrine, do you want to take a go at it? Yeah, I wanted to answer with another quote. Oh, we have a good pupil here. A quote that I found pretty interesting by Édouard Glissant. So apologies to the interpreters who will have to just translate it uh, without prep. So Édouard Glissant is very much a guide to me in my work. Okay, let me find this quote. It's a very short poem from the book uh, La Cuée du Lamentin, in which he talks about the interconnections between the place where one is and the world. And I think it's very, very appropriate when you're thinking about the diaspora. And he says, uh, it's poetry, I can't translate. It says, your interpreter, humbly, I wouldn't dare to try to interpret it. the utopia that never stops, that opens tomorrow as a shared fruit. It's very, very beautiful. And absolute diversity is what brings us uh, together today, so that's absolutely appropriate. And this whole notion of uh, trembling, and it's what Ramel Ross also was trying to say in this quote, it's a way to express oneself to be moved that goes simply beyond uh, uh, rational thinking or thought system. Joni or Mohamed, do you want to respond? Um, th there's a quote that I... 
Il y a une citation de Paul Gilroy que j'ai dans mon essai, alors je vais répondre avec une citation, enfin pas vraiment une citation, mais on parle de la culture vernaculaire noire et les questions d'un hurlement James Brown lorsqu'il se lève et hurle. Ça a tellement de puissance parce que c'est l'expression de l'inexprimable. Dans ce hurlement, il y a euh, la souveraineté des milliers, la douleur de millions et millions de, de gens noirs. Ça exprime mieux que n'importe quel essai. La beauté du son, de la musique euh, qui euh, se libère de la raison, qui n'a pas besoin de justification. Et la musique joue dans le sentiment, la sensation pure. Et je travaille maintenant sur un livre sur des comités britanniques noirs le long des côtes. Et quelquefois, je trouve une expérience noire dans un signe, dans des choses tout à fait banales. Et j'essaie de m'approcher d'une abstraction, de ne pas surexpliquer, de laisser ça au niveau des sensations. Et la musique est une forme très ancienne de communication. Mohamed, would you like to add something? No, no thanks. Johnny, can we uh, go back to you? I know uh, that you have issues with the notion of world music and its translations into the materiality and texture of your images. You said this just a, a, a few moments ago. I know you're looking for something in your images that would be a, an aesthetic of the B side. Can you tell us more about this? especially with connection to the magazine. Mm. Yeah, I think the work that you'll see on the screen is... Uh, is, is Je pense que ce que vous allez voir sur l'écran, c'est ce que j'ai fait euh, au début, c'est des travaux précoces. Ça ne représente pas tout à fait ce que euh, vous venez de, de dire, mais il y a une tradition qui euh, émerge du colonialisme, littéralement. Quand vous voyez ce que Cartier-Bresson a fait, je sais pas, ce n'est pas lui qui a parlé du moment décisif, ce n'était pas son expression, mais euh, des images. Euh, C'est un peu comme si on tire sur les animaux sauvages dans l'Afrique du Sud. C'est vraiment ce qu'il y a de plus colonialiste. Et moi, j'essaie de mettre le doigt dessus et de faire un lien. Quand on commence avec la photographie, on traverse toute cette tradition et puis on commence à penser à part et à faire une rupture avec cette tradition. Donc pour moi, la face B, c'est moins ce que vous trouvez dans ces espaces photographiques officiels, la photographie de rue, mais plutôt ce que l'on trouve dans la photographie vernaculaire. J'aime le travail de Liz Johnson Arthur. Pour moi, euh, elle a fait l'intervention la plus importante dans la photographie, depuis Eggleston peut-être. Euh, ce que fait Elston, c'est incroyable, parce qu'elle fait une sorte de, elle établit une sorte d'équilibre entre la photographie officielle, professionnelle, ce qui n'est pas facile. Et d'autre part, il y a un sentiment d'album de, de famille avec des compositions bizarres, avec des effets. Et elle était à Yashikati pour la photo comme Terry Richardson. Donc, pour moi, la face B, euh, j'en ai parlé à un ami qui m'a dit le problème avec la photographie de rue, c'est que ce n'est pas très rue. <rire> Alors, euh, ce que représente la face B, c'est une traduction euh, de la rue supérieure euh, des gens riches qui euh, explorent les espaces exotiques et la richesse de tout ça. Euh, je pense que les espaces exotiques, entre guillemets, parlent d'eux-mêmes et ça vient d'une une incitation différente, mais c'est pas facile. Ils les tableaux de périphérie. Mohamed, uh, when you're doing uh, uh, the uh, pictures of périphérique, you think they're missing images. Uh, it's almost uh, historical tableaus, and you're uh, you're playing a uh, partition a score. 
Can you tell us something more about the process behind the Périphérique series? This is not the series. This is Nous sommes à la. So there's a quote by Booba. I put it on my Instagram yesterday. So the future is behind me. I just found that it was so, such a beautiful sense. Oftentimes, these are. Uh, this is uh, considered to be completely unsubtle. But I think that what is funny, these things have been around for so long. They're very underlying. They've been there always, but we make them visible. Now it's being staged. It's almost fashionable. But let me get straight to the gist of it. So uh, the photo of Piri this one is called The Republic. I did this picture, I made this picture in 2006. So in my state of mind then, I was 28. In a given situation, what's interesting always is to look at uh, the picture at the time that it was made. And it was very important to me. At the time, the writing was being described. And, and the, the picture here is called The Republic. And there's written on it, Periphery, uh, Periphery. But it, don't pay attention to the title that you see. The caption, it's actually called The Republic. So when I made the picture back then, semantically, that's why I want to make the image. It's the image, but it's also the words. And this, there's the connection here again with the rap. And we're going back to what you said before. If you look at it backwards, rappers, they create images. They write words, text, but they create images. And uh, rappers are right there making the images. We have a language. We have our photographic language. So I see a parallel. So the idea of the world riot and the word revolt, or that was what I had in mind because I'm convinced that when this was taking place, the images that were being shown and of course the comments that went along with the images only talked about rioting. And it completely took out of any idea of reason or rationality. And so when I'm composing this image, I'm trying to think of a staging of what might have been happening with the two people who died. And there's a whole scene here with a flag that is what is invisible, what you don't see in the image carried by media. And it's not funny, but what's uh, interesting is this was done in Clichy-sous-Bois, which is a suburb of Paris. We talk about rap, but these are uh, with the friends from Ghetto Plus Gang that I've done this image. Uh, and there was uh, one person who was part of that uh, rap group. So uh, there's a whole story behind here. So it represents a, a painting by Delacroix, and it's an updated uh, version, if you like, of idea, where you integrate a whole story, a personal story, the story of immigration, but you integrate it into a broader uh, historical story. So you make fake press images, and at some point, You're very amused by the fake Lacoste. Can you tell us the anecdote of Arsenic and the Dia brand for their album cover? You want me to do that now? Okay. Yeah, thanks, Mohamed. You have to show a photo of Nous sommes Al. We are Al. Okay, let's take this one. Yeah, the young man on the left. Very typical of uh, the 95, 97 period up until 2003, 2005. And it's kind of come back into fashion. But what's funny is uh, Lacoste, the brand, has basically 
uh, now using streetwear for their own advertising and for their own image making. So back then in the newspaper and the media, uh, the director of Lacoste did not want to recognize people who were wearing Lacoste clothing, especially if they were suburban riffraff, you know, who were kind of like the third generation living in the uh, suburban Paris, often from African and North African countries. And so there was a whole Lacoste uh, culture because it was an expensive brand. It was a symbol of wealth. At the time, it was super fashionable for these young people to wear that brand. And there was another rap group that was called Arsenic. And they were a pillar in uh, the new school in France. So if we're talking about music, which we're supposed to be talking about today, there is the old school, old school, new school. And there's a real separation at that time with two uh, albums, L232 and Time Bomb. And there's and Arsenic was one of the mythical groups then, and Arsenic wore these kinds of uh, clothes, the, Ar the Lacoste brand clothing on the album cover. And the brand rejected them because of what they represented, because they were black. And Lacoste, or, or rather, the Arsenic group decided to move to another brand from an entrepreneur called Dia and who has sold his brand to the NBA. And their next album, I'm sorry, this cover of their second album, they uh, took up uh, the same positions, but they were all dressed in Dia and not like Ghost. So you see relationship, music, rap, industry, economy, mainstream economy, what can, is sellable or not. And like to quote a photograph, photographer, he doesn't know me, Tiku, a great photographer of the hip hop uh, culture, and he's still working today. Thanks, Mohamed. Cédrine, would you like to talk m more about the music so that will uh, mutate and uh, with the people that you meet in Malta. Can you tell us about the, su the super imposition of the topic that you're describing and the music uh, that's picking up sounds along the way? What's interesting is when uh, you work on a community, you look for places that not are places of passage, but places where people meet where people are going to live and where people are going to feel that they can be themselves. And what's interesting in my work at Insulaire, we're in a very small place. And there's only one place that pl plays Jamaican music, it's a kind of reggae bar by the seaside. And that was a place that was literally taken over. For the people who saw the series Small X by Steve McQueen, it's interesting to compare it with the London bar in the 1960s that became the nerve center of the Caribbean community. There's a mangrove effect in Malta with this bar. And what's really interesting that there's a need to take over a place. Where there's no, uh, there's no history of immigration. Before 2000, there was no particular migration of people from Africa. Malta was a British colony. It's still quite white. And so it was a place, once again, where, where they played Jamaican music. And, and they were talking to the other diaspora identities who were not necessarily Caribbeans, but basically the place became a place where sort of Afro descendants and identities of Afro descendants could exist without any way being uh, um, denigrated. So it, w it, was a, it was like creating a new home. I kind of forgotten the question by now. 
so this is where there's a this kind of hybridization the reggae of the 1970s and then people came and they brought their own sound and their sound is uh, from their own background uh, through a lot of mixtapes uh, that w were circulating through WhatsApp, through groups that were uh, uh, that revolved around music and they were expats or diaspora members of, say, in uh, Germany would produce something, and then these mixtapes went to Italy and then uh, Malta. So these tapes, in other words, are moving around through the diaspora, and there's this uh, hybridization in the form of playlists. So you have these mixtapes. It makes a uh, Nigerian uh, Afrobeat uh, with uh, reggae, uh, with artists such as Baby K, which is the uh, Italian reggaeton in music that basically is completely r rooted in uh, African beat, but that has also been uh, taken on by oh, white musicians in Europe. So basically, they're fragments of identities. Johnny, do you want to try and answer this idea and the use of mixtapes? which is also a concept or an idea that you often use or that you often talk about in, in your references of the mixtape? Yeah. Um. Ouais. Eh bien, j'aime le fait que les mixtapes étaient souvent do-it-yourself. Uh, ça a été mixé par des stations de radio on arrête uh, et puis il y a un nouveau son qui se il y a des sons qui se chevauchent et puis il y a des des, des coupures Eh bien je me souviens de voir uh, The Angelus Quake avec les Aquarians um, uh, vraiment des hip hop absolument incroyable Formidable. Biggie, M.O.P. Eh bien, c'était toxic de Britney Spears. Et puis, tout d'un coup, entre les deux, il y avait une sorte de réappropriation d'une culture inverse. Donc, Britney Spears a été euh, kidnappée, entre guillemets, et je l'ai écoutée avec des oreilles nouvelles. Uh, barbershop, uh, ce Jamaïcain qui est représenté par tout le monde et chaque fois qu'il y va, il doit écouter Céline Dion. Et moi, j'adore ce genre de mélange d'éléments et Céline Dion est pour lui très différente. C'est différent de l'écouter dans ce contexte-là. Et j'aime beaucoup ses effets et les mixtapes sont justement fabuleux pour ça, pour cette juxtaposition. Oui, avec les mixtapes, notamment au au Liban Ah ouais. Les mixtapes, ouais, plutôt des compilations. Yeah, more like compilations. Yeah. Okay, let me talk about my project. So music in my work, today I make sound pieces, sound works. So sound and music is something that I'm experimenting with, that I'm working on. In 2017, I was invited uh, to the Biennale of Sharjah in Beirut. And I was wandering around a market and I realized to what extent music was uh, everywhere in the market, especially at the end of the market. And there are a lot of people sell selling pirate uh, CDs. This was back in 2006, 2007, also in Clignancourt, in the suburb of Paris, there were people who were selling pirated cassettes or CDs. There were pirated um, compilations that had been burned on CDs. And, and same thing in uh, Beirut. Uh, the taxis would bought them, and they would have them in their taxis and then sell them on the marketplace. So I did a whole project that was experimental and of Arab music with a compilation to try to create a, a place to exhibit the compilations. And when the compilations uh, that we produced would then be taken back to the market. So I'm thinking of Shiri Namsawi, 
so he does experimental music in Beirut and the Oriental music movement that's very present there. So we did a compilation of traditional music, traditional Arab music, and experimental music. Thank you. I see that time is uh, marching on. Uh, let me turn to the audience and see if there are any questions out there for our uh, panel up here. So I want to give you an opportunity to speak. Uh, you can have a couple of minutes to think about it. And I'm going to uh, put my panel members through another exercise. I'd like to talk about a quote that I really like it. It's by a writer I really like, uh, Tina Kempt, and her work is called Listening to Images. And so I'm going to translate it again, where she says, the choice to listen rather than simply looking at the images is a conscious decision to question the equation between vision and knowledge by engaging photography through an essential sensorial register with uh, uh, etc. So I wanted to react with you. Uh, how can we listen to images? So the idea of flow in rap, Mohammed, or the idea of vibe, Johnny, or Cedrine, we talked about the idea of silence and how we hear silence. Sitting, sorry, if you would go first, please. Having thought about this and, and to prepare for this uh, conversation, I think that what's very present in the Insular series and, uh, and in my work more generally is the presence of the ocean. So the ocean in an almost silent way, uh, comes into the image. It's not visible. It's uh, the cold, the blue, the aqueous presence. It's almost like an internal music. And it's also because it, it's an opening to elsewhere, because images are always a, a dialogue between the presence that is here and the and the and the other and uh, the narrative between two continents and there's always the ocean between between these narratives and I think this is a, a, a presence it's it's silent but it's there in my work Johnny how about you would you like to react um, yeah I mean I think that was really beautiful that notion of of of, of, of something that is there and not there in an Là, dans l'image, c'est très séduisant et il faut peut-être que je ralentisse un peu. Je prenais une image et je me disais, ça y est. Et maintenant, je passe beaucoup plus de temps avec les images et j'aime des images qui ne sont pas nécessairement une, résolution, une solution. Dans le jazz, par exemple, vous n'êtes jamais dans une situation euh, ou un état euh, confortable. Il n'y a pas de solution à la fin. Et quand vous avez, par exemple, la géométrie, ça plaît à la foule. Mais lorsque j'écoute mes images, j'essaie d'écouter quelque chose qui reste en suspens, qui est une ambivalence qui n'est pas trop claire et nette. Parce que je pense que la photographie peut très bien être considéré comme une forme à cure exacte de documentation. Euh, on ne peut plus croire, faire confiance à une photographie. Donc, euh, il y a une question de une sensation, une émotion, pas ce qui est documenté euh, proprement dit. C'est ça qui veut dire écouter les images, je crois. Quelque chose qui est un peu compliqué et incomplet, qui n'est pas achevé. Réagir. Mohamed, how about you? On this idea of listening to images. In a basic way, uh, Johnny talked about geometry, and in periphery, geometry or tension or uh, giving image to tension, it, it is about form and rhythm. So there's a parallel in the composition. Just a, a, 
a quote from Asanik since I talked about the group. So I'd like to quote one or two sentences from one of the really well-known texts that they wrote. I box with words. So y you already have an image with the title. Uh, misery in prose then exploded for the good cause. P, uh, who to who does war uh, profit? Uh, Schwarzenegger, and I, uh, sorry, untranslated all that speed, apologies. So peace that lives under a tarp. This is already an image. So the relationship is permanent. It's always there between sound, text, image. These are things that work together. And it's almost naturally, you talk about jazz, and it's true. It, it gets done intuitively. This is not something that you conceptualize, or you don't start with a concept, then you get the, to the words. You, you live it as you're doing it. And uh, there's a, you see something, you, you get that image, you see it, you feel it, and you, you okay, you crop it. But w like music, it's, it's back and forth, it's porous. And I think the relationship between music and words is something that's always there, but it's not something that's intellectual. Thank you, Mohamed. I'd like to go now to the audience if you have questions uh, now or never. Person over here. Thank you. Johnny Pitts talked about a photographer. And he talked about images. Yes. Il est difficile de trouver ses livres. Lee Johnson Arthur. Liz Johnson Archer. And Mohammed in, in your series uh, Peripherie and Nous sommes les Halles, I see a difference between the first pictures that were taken at Les Halles in the center of Paris and the photo in particular, La République, the Republic. Is it staged? No, in Périphérique, everything is staged. Everything was constructed. There's a series that I did over three years, and when I went to these places, I knew the people, and I took a long time to create an image. It's entirely constructed and staged. So this is not documentary. It's not documentary work. No, that's the whole point. It's composition, and that is the whole point of the series. Go flick back to my uh, image um, because there is a cette photo là c'est à clichy sous bois en 2010 et c'est le 5e anniversaire de Bunan Z les deux garçons qui ont été poursuivis à mort et euh, cette image a été prise. Vous voyez, il y avait tous les journalistes au premier rang et puis le maire euh, régional était là pour faire un discours et il s'adressait uniquement aux journalistes. Et ceux qui étaient derrière étaient devenus invisibles. Tout ce qui comptait, c'est ce que les journalistes allaient dire de ce qu'il avait dit. Et euh, les gars, ces, ces gens-là sont restés invisibles. Donc j'ai pris cette photo pour les rendre visibles. Yes. Est-ce qu'on a d'autres questions Any other questions out there If there are no other questions, I'm going to invite you to do two things. First, I want to come for the signature of a B-side. And uh, Johnny's going there if you want uh, to get a book signed. And the second thing I can invite you or urge you to do is to come to the signature, the signing of uh, Mohamed Broussa's new book, Périphérique. And Mohamed will sign it on the stand of loose joints once right after this conversation. I'd like to thank you for your attention. I'd really like to thank the participants who were very generous in their answers. and.
and they were very patient with all of my commentary. And I'd like to thank Valley Food too for welcoming us. Thanks to all of you. Thank you. Thank you.